What's up everyone? My name is Mike Will. I am the Fish Rules. Welcome to this week's video. I'm super excited to have the Sony Alpha A7R5 right here in my hand. We're gonna be taking it around London for a real hands-on review. Uh, I'm gonna give you guys my thoughts on what I like about it and how it performs in some different environments such as some portraits using the amazing autofocus and the AI technology in this little bad boy, as well as tracking some cars, as well as testing out the new screen. Uh, we'll get into some of the details as we get on. Let's get into it. All of the rules from today's video will be in the description below, so make sure you check that out at the end of this video, and you can see how the rules are to edit. The A7R5 has 61 megapixels, which is the same as the A7R4. One of the reasons the autofocus is so good, such as the human eye tracking, is because of the eight times faster processing speed it now has, so the AI technology in this bad boy really takes it to the next level with the new chip. Playing around with the four axis flip screen, uh, it's a bit of a maze. I get lost all the time, but it's really great to have the ability to obviously shoot it for portrait uh, and equally I really missed this on my a7 IV uh, being able to have this and now obviously on the a7R5 we have that ability to really move it around using most of it in all shooting conditions I'm already lost in it something else I'm going to mention from the start is the touch screen now I'm a huge fan of the touch screen and one of the things that I do really like here I've now got the tap to shoot feature enabled so I'm literally tap focusing and tapping so super useful um, I really like that feature, so much more ability. You can also swipe up, there's a new home menu. We'll go through some of that in a little bit, but here are the shots on the screen from me tapping to shoot. And straight from the off, using the new menu system, you have a home screen now, which is really great. And it has everything, to be honest, everything I really would want to be able to change in one place now. It's a bit like the FN button. That's a sick shot. So I know eye autofocus tracking isn't like, like that new for animals, but it's really cool to see how quickly it tracks it. And just like, I know you guys can't see this, but it's literally locked on. Let's see if we can get a little, a little snapshot if I, can you see guys there? Yeah, the eye autofocus really, really tracks it. Even when I'm moving, it then stays. So animal and bird, we can confirm with the new AI technology uh, is really, really good. So I've changed the settings now to track cars and vehicles. And I'm actually, I haven't even told you what lens I'm shooting on. I'm sure you guys saw down there, but I'm on the 24 to 70 Mark one. And I know that this body is actually made for the 24 to 70 Mark two. So I don't have that lens yet. Hopefully it will be in my what's in my camera bag 2023, which is coming out in Jan. So hopefully that lens will be in there then. But for now, still using the Mark one. But what I did was I tracked early on. It just picks up the front of every car as they're coming through. And interestingly enough, so you can see it's picking up on the taxis, literally tracking them the whole way. Yeah, amazing. And one thing it did do that, which was quite interesting, was basically a bike came through and it picked up on the stationary ice cream truck there and didn't pick up on the bikes. Um, so we'd have to see if that is a case, but it seems to be quite strong at holding the focus that you want, which is obviously the cars. Oh, there's that. There's a famous guy there. Look at him. Look, quick, 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 quick. Is he is is a comedian, actor? You know he is? <laughs> I didn't get a photo. Man, street photography. Damn it, what am I doing? I'm telling you to get it and not me. So internally on the Sony a7R5, we have a CF Express card slot and a SD card slot. So you have both options. I have one of each in here. So I have my SD, which obviously I use normally, but I'm now moving on to the CF Express cards. I've got the Lexar one here, which I'm gonna be using moving forward. And this obviously is great because it means I'm not gonna have as much time buffering. Uh, the speeds are way faster. So if I'm shooting like live music or something and using the Lexar CF Express card is gonna really help improve the right speed and make things a lot quicker in my workflow. While we're at this classic spot, we're gonna get a couple of quick shots, one of, of Big Ben, but also I've just noticed the light hitting the London eyes quite nice right now. So we're gonna do that. And then we're gonna shoot this classic spot in here, which I think people are probably in there right now. Yeah, bro, of course, yeah. Yeah, so it's m.visuals. Um, yeah, cool. nice one. Great to meet you. Thanks nice. for stopping. Wow, and here's a good spot. You got a good spot. You can take a step out. There's a, you can get a bus coming through as well. Okay, sick. Like, well, you're looking for, okay. So there's, there's a ton of really nice, nice angles here and places to shoot. So one of them, I don't know if you guys have been down to the bottom bit, but there's that archway there. Okay, so we're gonna set up here. We're gonna basically shoot. You can see a bus is coming right now. We've got this leading line with a reflection in the puddle. Well, kind of there's some sort of reflection in here. We've got the lights are on, there's some, oh my God, it's all kicking off. 
The London Eye's there. I've got a slightly longer exp exposure. Woo, almost got hit by a bus. Here we go. Yeah, that's really nice. Uh, I don't know how Sony are going to feel about me dipping this in the puddle, but we're going to go for it. <laughs> All right, that's mad. Uh, on the screen now. So I need to make something that you can like add on to here. So this little bit here is always off when you're doing like a low to the ground reflection. So it'd be quite nice. Add something here to make it easy to drop down. So that shot with the bus and then I took a little longer than expected, but I got a couple of variations. They're on the screen right now. And then we're going to meet up with Tor. We're going to shoot some portraits, testing their AI, uh, eye autofocus. We'll see what she's wearing, but usually she has like a mask on, looks really cool. So again, we'll see how it copes with all of that. Let's go. So we're here with Tor, we're going to shoot some portraits. We're basically going to test out the autofocus. We're going to be using some masks and we're really going to give it, push it to the max basically and see what it can do. Okay, so we have the option when we go into menu system now to go to variable shutter set. And now we can change it to basically anything and we can check and scan basically. So you can then have it at a random setting. Does that work? <laughs> yeah, let's go. So we're going to do three different things here. We're going to start with no mask and we're going to test out the eye tracking. We're then going to put a like face mask on. We're going to test it and then we're going to put on like a full mask and we're going to see how the camera copes the whole time it's tracking her eye. And again, turn really quickly. You can see the whole time it just picks up. Keep coming. The whole time it just keeps tracking on her eye. That's unreal. Cheese. Okay, so part two now is with a mask. We're going to put a mask on and we're going to see how it tracks. By the way, lens guys, I'm shooting on the Sony 35 1.4 at 1.4 to get maximum kind of depth and also really test out the eye autofocus and see how clean it is. But we can see super clean so far, looking good. Her body, her face, eye, eyes on. Okay, that was sick. So those are on the screen now as well. And you can see it was tracking real nicely. So part three of this test is to see how it performs with a full mask on and we're gonna see if it catches focus and how it works. So let's try it right now. Okay, so now we're gonna test her walking towards us. So walk towards us. It's fully locked in on the eye, on the head. I'm actually like super impressed with that. Still head, turn around. Boom, straight onto head and eye. Raw, very impressed, right. The big question is, the focus itself, how's it gonna be picking up? Oh, it looks like it's actually picking up on your eye. <laughs> That's mad. Yeah, it knows. The AI knows. Andy behind the camera here has just pointed out that he's shooting on the Sony A7S III and that did not pick up uh, the eye autofocus when she had the mask on. So interesting to see the difference in the A7R5 and the A7S III. There's so many camera names, it always trips me up. But so far, so good. Uh, really impressed with the eye autofocus. Obviously, I shot it already with the break dancers at the Sony event, but it was a, like a, a very quick experience. Now I've had it for a little bit longer. Some really great tests, all of that out. Made shooting portraits super easy. So we moved to a separate location now for some more portraits. This time we've moved on to the 14mm 1.8 lens, which is going to be a good test to see how it tracks. Tor's got her mask on. And this is actually the lens I used in the first video. So if you haven't watched that video, after this one, you can go back and check that out because I use this for the break dancers and it's a really good opportunity to see how it, well it tracked then. But now, again, we're gonna test with an actual face mask this time, so let's see. Okay, go like the like you did earlier with like, that's it like that, yeah. It's like we're in a Star Wars movie. I have a lightsaber. Do you actually? I didn't know how to carry that <laughs> She didn't bring the lightsaber. Actually, something else to mention that I haven't yet is that the viewfinder let me take a look through this bad boy, has 9.4 million dots. So again, it's a massive upgrade from, I use the a7 IV mainly, so it's a massive upgrade from that. But obviously again, it's an even bigger upgrade from the a7R III, which I currently have. I, I didn't have the, the IV, I skipped that generation. So the viewfinder is just crystal clear. So we're back out on the streets now, we've put the 70s 200 Mark II on the a7R V. And we're going to test out just a little few things, mainly street photography. So we're going to just see basically how it is tracking people, punching in. Also, I mean, I put cars back on because I was obsessed with the car feature. And you can see here that it's just instantly 
tracking right away at night as well. So it's just good to see a difference there between day and night. So I'm going to take it off the car feature now and I'm just going to roll up to the human. So now we're back on humans and you can see, boom, straight on the eye. Straight on the eye. Um, but I'm going to hold it properly because it's quite, it's quite late at night. So I want to make sure everything's focused. Here we go. There's a person. That's a nice frame. She was, yeah, boom. Oh, that's unreal. It just stuck on her. So you can see my frame here. I'm at 200. I'm going to bump my eyes up to 4K and we're going to see if it picks up the people here. They are eye face audio detection. Boom. So that's the end of this hands-on review on the Sony a7R5. I think you guys agree it's outperformed any other Sony camera that I've used before, especially with the AI technology in the autofocus. That's the first thing that really jumped out at me. Uh, second thing was the flip screen. Uh, I really like that now, having the ability to flip it out in the four axis. It's a bit of a puzzle, I'm still getting lost, but really like that feature. Touchscreen menu is something else that I really liked and I definitely would use a lot if I had this camera. Uh, just being able to flip up, get to the menu. Um, also, obviously, having the option to, rather than hitting the FN, you can actually just have a home screen and it has all the information there. So, again, a really, really great feature that I loved on this camera. Now, I can't comment on the quality of the raw images because I haven't been able to sit down and edit them because the files are so new, they don't work in Lightroom just yet. But when this video goes live, I will have been able to edit them, obviously. And I'm hoping that with the 61 megapixels, they'll be super crisp, sharp, and having that extra resolution will be really nice to edit with. All the rules are in the description below, so you can head down there to download them if you want to check out some of the files. If you have any comments about this camera, feel free to leave them in the comment section below, and I'll check all of those out. Big up for watching. I'll catch you guys very soon.